It's just gone 8 o'clock on Friday the 31st of July and this is a special sponsored edition of Great Interpreters to celebrate the 5th birthday of local choral ensemble Vox Cape Town coinciding this month incidentally with FMR's 25th birthday as well. Tonight we invite you, our musical family, to join us for a journey as we play some of our favorite recordings and reflect on some of the highlights of the past five years. Do connect with us in the studio tonight via WhatsApp or Telegram on 061-799-1013, SMS on 39792, or by giving us a call on 021-401-1013. We also encourage you to visit our website, voxcapetown.com, to see for yourself some of the visuals that we'll be describing or to read more. I'm John Woodland, founder and director of the ensemble, and I'm joined tonight by the group's manager, Kyle Paulson. Now, the first work you heard there was Benedicamus Domino, a rousing carol by Peter Warlock, a composer who has a special significance for our patron, Dr. Barry Smith, and whose music we've presented a number of times at our annual Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols, but more about Barry and those performances later. When I founded Vox five years ago, my vision for the ensemble was to enrich the musical life of the Mother City by creating mesmerizing multi-sensory choral experiences for our singers and audiences. Other important aims have been to develop new audiences for choral music by performing seldom heard repertoire in unconventional spaces and to support local composers and musicians by commissioning and recording new music. But our top priority has always been our live performances, hasn't it, Kyle? Definitely, John. And one of Vox's signature events is a multi-sensory pairing of wine and choral music at Groot Constantia, the oldest wine-producing estate in South Africa, and probably my favorite concerts. Reflecting on the ever-popular food and wine pairings led us to consider combining wine and music. It had not, as far as we know, been done before with choral music, and so Vinnie Choral was born. We developed a good relationship with Groot Constantia, and so together at these presentations, we offer guests an exceptional mingling of the senses, as we pair a selection of the estate's renowned wines with a variety of choral masterpieces from across the centuries. In the candlelit atmosphere of the historic tasting cellar, an estate specialist guides guests through seven of the estate's finest wines, ranging from the Cap Classique to the famous Grand Constance, described in novels by Jane Austen and Charles Dickens. Madrigals, folk songs and contemporary choral works to accompany the tastings are introduced in inimitable style by our friend Rodney Trudgeon. And here he is to tell you a little more about his connection to Vox and the ways in which Vox has been involved with our favorite radio station, FMR. This is Rodney Trudgeon, and it's a great pleasure and a privilege to be part of Vox's birthday celebrations and to wish them all the best. 
I've been involved with them in many ways, broadcast-wise and personally. The annual Nine Lessons and Carols we've been broadcasting of FMR since 2016. Vox Cape Town has broadcast a locally flavoured adaptation of the famous Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols from King's College on Christmas Eve. And then there have been smaller projects as well, such as the Baroque Festival, the opening concert in September 2018, which we broadcast live, as well as a Baxter concert series, Mozart Wins, in January 2018. What I've always admired about Vox is that they've been able to come up with unique concepts. A thing that I particularly enjoyed was the Vinnie Choral Evenings. There we met in the tasting room at Groot Constantia, and the evening was specially designed to taste wines and to have the wines somehow match the music. And uh, John and Kyle were very clever in being able to choose music, a repertoire that was both interesting, entertaining and thoroughly convincing. With Karen Woodcock, a specialist at Constantia, the people just absolutely enjoyed the evening and the various different wines we've tasted. So that was something rather special and I think somewhat unique. So. All members of Vox, a jolly happy birthday to you and many, many more. I hope once all this madness is over, we'll be able to come and see you on stage with the wonderful, wonderful sound that you make. Thank you, Rodney. So to set the scene for a Vinnie Coral wine and music pairing, we encourage you to pour yourself a glass of wine if you have any left and to imagine how it might accompany the following two pieces of music. If you're enjoying a chilled white wine, it might suit the buoyant jazzy number In Vino Veritas, In Wine the Truth, by Paul Gibson. Or if you have a red wine in your glass, perhaps a Bordeaux or Cape blend, you might imagine the different varietals combining to form a cohesive and flavorful whole, similar to the way in which the five independent vocal lines weave together to form this madrigal by Thomas Morley, Now is the Month of Maying. In vino, in vino veritas, you can't hide yourself from the truth. In vino, in vino veritas, more and more and more I'll get to know you. Thank you. 
You can't hide yourself from what's true. In vino, in vino veritas, more and more and more and more I'll get to know you. Each with his body laughs upon the greeny grass. Each with his body laughs upon the greeny grass. The spring clad all in gladness of love and winter sadness. The spring clad all in gladness of love and winter sadness. And to the backward sound, the nymphs rail up the ground. To the backpack sound, the nymphs straight up the ground. Find them why sit we music with sweet delight refusing. Find them why sit we music with sweet delight refusing. Sit in tears and speak. Shall we play Bali break? Sit in tears and speak. Shall we play Bali break? Two works highlights from Vox Cape Town's wine and music pairings at Groot Constantia. In Vino Veritas by Paul Gibson, followed by Now is the Month of Maying by Thomas Morley. As John mentioned earlier, tonight is a special program to celebrate some of the musical highlights of the choral ensemble Vox Cape Town over the past five years. But how did Vox come to be? We've invited Dr. Barry Smith onto tonight's program to tell us about the genesis of Vox. Hi, I'm Barry Smith, retired now, but for many years busy music making in Cape Town, wearing a number of musical hats. One of these was being conducted to the St. George's Singers, a group of singers specializing in choral music of a smaller, intimate nature. When the time came when I felt I was ready to retire, I suggested to John that he should fill the void with a similar group of singers. I was delighted that he took up the suggestion, and so the new, lively, and highly successful Vox appeared in the Cape Town scene. John and his singers have made a notable, fresh addition to the Cape Town music scene with many imaginative and successful performances. A memorable appearance was at my 80th birthday celebration last year when they sang beautifully for the guests. So, happy birthday, Vox! Thank you, Barry. And as you heard, Vox has enjoyed a rewarding relationship with our patron over the past five years. In fact, every year since 2016, Vox has performed at the musical lecture performances that Barry presents in the Baxter Concert Hall as part of the summer school program at UCT, bringing classical music to a much wider audience. And over the years, these recitals have included music by Mozart, Brahms, Beethoven and Handel. Earlier this year, we also performed at a summer school course with Grant McLaughlin, tracing the development of choral music over hundreds of years, from the simplicity of monastic plain song to the flowering of polyphony in the Renaissance. Here are three live recordings from the Baxter Concert Hall. The first is a simple motet by Mozart that you may recognize, Ave Verum Corpus. That's followed by a sublime work by Palestrina, a setting of Psalm 42, and finally, a rowdy folk song from 14th century France.
Three Pieces live from the Baxter Concert Hall as part of Vox Cape Town's participation in the UCT Summer School. First, Mozart's Ave Verum, accompanied by Eric Dippenar. Sicu Cervus by Palestrina, and lastly, Alle Psalite, from the 14th century. To fulfill Vox's vision of creating immersive musical experiences, we've attempted to inspire all of the senses, stimulating the eyes as well as the ears, and so imaginative visuals that match the music on offer and that form a unified identity from concert posters to the performance itself are important. We approached designer James Rink in Vox's early days to help us establish a visual identity for ourselves. My name is James Rink. John contacted me before Vox Cape Town had been properly branded when it was still Vox Humano. I ended up helping Vox Cape Town develop their logo as it is today. I also developed uh, the website that is up at the moment and I also designed some of the concert posters I think that was possibly the most stressful, but also the most fun. The first one was very simple, the Taverner one. The tiger there obviously representing Tiger Tiger Burning Bright, inspired by an interesting artwork that I saw a long time ago. The latter concerts, Trust the Silences and then the Baltic concert, those became a little bit more complex, but it was really fun to sort of have free range to do whatever I liked with it. And I think the idea was Trust the Silences was quite distinct, where I had to merge two pretty contrasting concepts. The idea of the old and the new, the modern and the traditional, what I would call more traditional choral works with Flight to Paradise, that song which sounded like a techno track. And that was basically what I tried to convey in the Trust the Silences poster. And the Baltic poster, was a little bit different. And so the idea there was to convey a sense of adventure, a voyage that, you know, through different songs that represented different geographies and different times. And we tried to do a sort of National Geographic magazine cover theme with this poster. And otherwise, I've more or less been Vox Cape Town's groupie, the only one who didn't really sing. <laughs> I felt very privileged to be a part of this project. And to know now that they've turned five years is quite... It's quite overwhelming. I remember the beginning of the project and uh, it's strange to think now that it's been five years. A very happy birthday to Vox Cape Town and all the best for the future endeavors that they decide to take on. The performances to which James referred, A Tale of Two Taverners, Trust the Silences and Northern Lights, A Baltic Voyage, all formed part of Vox's series of concerts in 2016 and 17 called New Soundscapes, concerts designed to expose local audiences to fresh choral sounds augmented by lighting and projections. Trust the Silences was held in the Bishop's Memorial Chapel, a choir's dream performance space and where I learned to play the organ, and the title of the concert was a quotation by Eric Whitaker, who in the score for his choral masterpiece, when David Heard, advised the singers, above all, trust the silences. This is important in much of Whittaker's music in which correctly judged gaps between the phrases heighten the intensity and drama of the music. Eric Whittaker shared that musical program with another Eric, Eric Eschenwaltz, a contemporary Latvian composer, and one of Eschenwaltz's most popular pieces is a setting of a nostalgic poem by Sarah Teasdale, in which the narrator, in her dreams, remembers childhood friends. Only in Sleep is sung in the Bishop's Memorial Chapel by Vox Cape Town, with soprano soloists Steph Polker and Jenny van Dusburg.
Only in Sleep by Eric Eschenwaltz with soloists Stephanie Polka and Jenny van Dusburg. In that same concert, Trust the Silences, which was a celebration of contemporary choral music, we collaborated with Richard Brokenshaw. For me, a musical dream come true. Hello, I am Richard Brokenshaw, and I am a singer and musician in Cape Town. Choral music has always been a very spiritual experience for me, and I have a huge admiration for those choirs that are able to take me on a journey through the harmony of sound. One of them being the amazing Vox Cape Town. I have had the honor and privilege of performing with them at the Bishop's College Chapel, where I sang Fly to Paradise by Eric Whittaker, as well as some more modern pieces by Radiohead and the Cinematic Orchestra. We were also involved with one of the most prestigious arts events in Cape Town, the Arts Angels event at Element House. I would like to extend a happy, happy birthday to Vox. And even though I won't be celebrating with all of you, I will be thinking of you and listening to your beautiful choral music.
That was Fly to Paradise by Eric Whittaker, transcribed for the organ from its original techno backing by one of Vox's singers, Johann van der Volt, and sung by Vox Cape Town with Richard Brokenshaw, soloist. Fast forward to July last year, when Vox presented three performances of botanically inspired choral music at the UCT Irma Stern Museum. These recitals, entitled Flower Songs, coincided with the museum's annual winter exhibition, Tipping Point, Threatened Plants of Southern Africa, curated by Mary van Blomestein. Irma Stern was a major South African artist. Her home and studio in Rosebank now comprise a permanent collection of her art and artefacts that were acquired during her travels in Europe and Africa. The first half of our morning recital, which took place in the downstairs living room, comprised two wistful ballads, based on traditional folk tunes from the British Isles, especially adapted for our singers and clarinet by local composer Matthew Dennis. They were followed by the vivid depictions contained within the five flower songs by Benjamin Britten, ranging from the fleeting nature of daffodils, a metaphor for life, to the rollicking rags to riches ballad of green broom. Tim Povel, a South African origami artist currently based in Vancouver, was commissioned to create a striking and original work of art to accompany these recitals. To fold the flowers, Tim drew on his own observations of blue and red dyes on Table Mountain, one of his favourite hiking spots. In performance, each singer proudly pinned one of these iridescent orchids against her or his white attire. Green Broom, Anonymous There was an old man lived out in the wood. His trade was a cutting of broom. He had but one son, without thrift, without good, who lay in his bed till t'was noon, bright noon. The old man awoke one morning and spoke. He swore he would fire the room, that room, if his son John would not rise and open his eyes and away to the wood to cut broom, green broom. So Johnny arose, and he slipped on his clothes, 
and away to the wood to cut broom, green broom. He sharpened his knives, and for once he contrived to cut a great bundle of broom. When Johnny passed under a lady's fine house, passed under a lady's fine room, she called to her maid, Go fetch me, she said, go fetch me the boy that sells broom. When Johnny came into the lady's fine house and stood in the lady's fine, fine room, Young Johnny, she says, will you give up your trade and marry a lady in bloom? Johnny gave his consent, to church they both went, and he wedded the lady in bloom. At market and fair, all folks do declare, there is none like the boy that sold broom, green broom. was a cutting of broom, green, 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 broom. He had the grandson with a thought, with a thought, who lay in his bed, it was me, bright room, bright room, bright room. Green, 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 The old man awoke one morning and swore. He swore he would fire the room, the room, the room. If his John would not rise and open his eyes and go away to the wood to cut green, green, room, green, 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 room. The humorous Ballad of Green Broom, recited by Fee Smith, followed by Benjamin Britten's musical setting. And before that, Sprig of Time, based on English folk tune and originally arranged by John Rutter, adapted there by local composer Matt Dennis, with Vox singer Matthew Ferrandi in his other role as clarinetist. For the remainder of the program at the Irma Stern Museum, guests were invited upstairs to the exhibition space. Switching from flora to fauna, Vox presented the first performance of a new choral work by Nicky Schreerer, called Caged Bird. Based on a poem by Maya Angelou, here's Nicky to tell us a bit more about the piece. Hi there, my name is Nikki Schreira, and I'm a vocalist and composer from Cape Town. I was thrilled to have the opportunity to collaborate with Vox in bringing a work of mine to life. The piece is called Caged Bird, and the text of the piece was written by the great Maya Angelou. I composed this in 2018 for a competition, for which it was not chosen. I know, how rude. But the upside, the silver lining, was that I got to bring it to Vox to see if they wanted to take it on and make it their own. And I'm so glad that they said yes, and that they have now performed it beautifully in several live settings and also recorded it. And I was equally thrilled to add my lone voice to this recording. So I would like to wish Vox the happiest fifth birthday. I can't believe it's you're five years old. And thank you all for breathing such life into the cultural scene in Cape Town and beyond. 
And I can't wait to hear what you do in the years to come. And I know that you'll all sing from strength to strength. Happy birthday. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wing in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird has stalks down his narrow cage and seldom see through his walls of rage. His wings are slipped and his knees are Caged Bird by Nikki Schreira, a setting of the poem by the same name by Maya Angelou, in that first recording of the work featuring the composer's guest vocals. Do look out for our upcoming and fifth CD, Off Barrels and Blossoms, inspired by our Vinnie Choral and Flower Songs performances and available, to coincide with spring, in early September. Although Vox's primary form of music making is a cappella, or unaccompanied, choral singing, it's always a thrilling experience for us to sing with an instrumental ensemble. In 2018, we participated in the opening night of the Cape Town Baroque Festival, which featured a stellar lineup of local and international soloists. 
The central work of the evening was the popular Gloria by Vivaldi, which included soloists Elsie B. Richter and Linnell Kennard. The performance was also broadcast live on FMR, so you might even remember that. Here is the opening movement of the Gloria by Vivaldi. The first movement of Vivaldi's Gloria with Camerata Tintabarocca and Vox Cape Town, directed by Eric Dippinar. A reminder that this is a special sponsored episode of Great Interpreters on Fine Music Radio, celebrating the fifth birthday of Fox Cape Town. We invite you to connect with us in the studio via WhatsApp or Telegram 061-799-1013, SMS 39792, or by giving us a call on 021-401-1013. Vox aims to promote South African choral music by performing music by local composers. We also support the genesis of new music to expand the local choral repertoire, and as a demonstration of this commitment, we commission new music from local composers on at least an annual basis. Our first commissioned work in 2017 was a festive setting by Micah Watson of a poem by Margaret Colmer called Christmas in Africa. Subsequently, Vox has commissioned various arrangements and transcriptions, as well as a new cycle by Hans Hussen called Wegewerp that we were intending to premiere in May this year before the current pandemic put a spanner in our live music activities. Two years ago, Vox was invited to perform Long Distance at the Ecologic Awards in Chwane. This ceremony, rewarding individuals, organizations and communities that contribute towards a sustainable world, opened with our recording of a new choral piece that was specially written by Grant McLachlan. Mulweni is a setting of a poem written by David Parry Davies, and the aim of this work was, in David's words, to put appropriately beautiful sound to these words that will create feelings and sensations of joy and exquisite beauty associated with our beautiful and precious earth. Come 
Mulweni by Grant McLaughlin, one of Vox Cape Town's specially commissioned works, an environmental anthem and setting of a poem by David Parry Davies. And now for a message from another special Vox colleague, Magdalene Minar. This is Magdalene Minar, and I am sending the amazing Vox Cape Town a birthday message. I think back on my memories with Vox Cape Town and the one thing that obviously stands out is our numerous in the dark concerts that I produce, uh, which we held at Youngblood in Bray Street, which were always a complete hit and always completely sold out with the choir standing on various levels, singing in darkness. And thankfully, our last one was before lockdown and so many people bought tickets that we had to arrange a next show, an extra show, and then that one was also sold out and we still had people queuing for tickets and that to me summarizes the kind of magnetism that Fox Cape Town has. Another very fond memory is from the Spear Festival of White Lights curated by Jay Pather, I think it was four years ago, where I had to lie in a pool. Thankfully, I was on a lilo with the choir around the pool singing a beautiful rendition of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. That for me is a musical memory that will always remain with me. I think that Vox Cape Town does incredible work musically and also for the community. They look after their audience members by giving them fantastic immersive performances, which is something that I really appreciate. I think that um, the musical leadership that they get from John is just phenomenal. And I love you guys. I think you are such a wonderful choir and ensemble and so nice to work with from a producer's perspective as well as from a, an artist's perspective. I wish you guys a very, very happy birthday, even though it's in lockdown, but some special things are coming from lockdown. And I salute your positivity and your enigmatic music making. I just think you guys rock in a classical way. <laughs> um, and I really hope that we will be working together again soon. Lots of love from me. Thank you, Magdalene. I don't think any of us will forget singing Hallelujah as you lay on that lilo in the middle of a pool in the middle of the night. The In the Dark recital series, Magdalene's Brainchild, has been one of our most rewarding recurring events. Taking place in the trendy Youngblood Gallery in Bree Street, the audience is encouraged to wear blindfolds to heighten the experience of listening, only listening, to the music. Here are pieces by two composers who featured prominently at In the Dark. The first is a lullaby by the Polish composer Gorecki, and perhaps to give your ears a rest from all the voices, Spiegel im Spiegel by Estonian composer Arvo Pärt, played by Ariella Kyra, Cello and Matthew Goldsworthy. You might want to turn down the lights for these.
two pieces that featured at Vox's In the Dark performances at the Youngblood Art Gallery in Cape Town. A Lullaby, Sleep for Me by Goretzky and Spiegel im Spiegel by Arvo Pert. That latter work was also included in another popular Vox concert, Northern Lights, A Baltic Voyage, in which we treated listeners to a smorgasbord of contemporary music as we embarked on a musical voyage to the mystical Northern Lights. Definitely a highlight for me. Another important part of Vox's musical vision has been to nurture our musical ecosystem, not just our singers and supportive audiences, but also the musicians with whom we have worked, the composers and arrangers who have written music for us, and the ensembles with whom we have sung. For example, we've twice joined Camarata Tinta Barocca for performances at the Cape Town Baroque Festival, as you heard earlier, and the Symphony Choir of Cape Town, the Gentlemen's Ensemble, and the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra for Mahler's glorious Resurrection Symphony at the reopening of the Cape Town City Hall in 2018. Community performances are also an important component of Vox's musical activities and we're passionate about building relationships with groups that are less readily exposed to live choral music and this has led to performances at schools and retirement villages, cultural exchanges with choirs visiting from abroad and various fundraising events. A memorable partnership for me has been with Ian Berger Simpson who has allowed us to add a piano to our Symphony of Sound often in unusual spaces. My name is Ian Burgess Simpson, and I've had the pleasure on three occasions of working with Fox in a collaboration of sorts where we have provided a piano for the choir. These have involved interesting locations and circumstances. So in, in one case, it was an open rehearsal that Fox held, uh, which was free of charge, and we supplied a Steinway piano for that. And then we did a collaboration at the Norville Foundation and again at Hurt Constantia. The performance of the Norville was particularly interesting. For us, it was the first performance of the Fazioli Grand Piano, which we had uh, brought into the country recently. And the space itself was in one of the large galleries at the Norville and effectively inside an installation. The art covered the walls and the floor with coffee sacks. A very extraordinary venue, huge space, but with this strange sort of acoustic condition. And I was amazed at how the choir managed the space. I was there for their rehearsal and then for the performance. And the end result was absolutely wonderful, but a very, very strange acoustic environment that they had to adjust to very quickly. It's very interesting working with voice and piano and particularly with Vox where, where you have otherwise unaccompanied choir. The similarities between piano and the human voice are quite important in that the piano is designed, what's intention is to be able to sing and in that sense to simulate the human voice, which is difficult for a piano to do because it's a highly mechanical instrument. So very good instruments have features of design and materials that allow them to do this. And listening in particular to the Fazioli, which is based in its design on the Italian bel canto concept, listening to that in combination with the human voice in a very, very revealed texture was absolutely marvellous combination. I think also that Vox have done extraordinary things for music in Cape Town in general. I think they're one of the forces that have presented a new way of appreciating music, blending other elements of sight, lighting, with very interesting spaces and very carefully well thought out programs. And I think it's a high degree of musical integrity and detail, and yet with a great entertainment element, completely engaging listening to Vox. So in terms of their birthday, I want to wish them the absolute very best for the future. I think they've done tremendous things for us already in Cape Town, and I believe that they will continue and continue to flourish. So John and everybody in the choir, a very, very happy birthday. Thank you, Ian, and I'm glad that you mentioned our performance at the breathtaking Norval Foundation in Steenburg, at which we performed choral masterpieces by five great living composers. From the pillow-soft dissonances of Eric Whittaker and the repetitive structures of Philip Glass, to the mesmerizing soundscapes of Ola Yelo and Kim Andre Arneson, the Norval musical odyssey concluded here in South Africa with Peter Klatso's two songs from the Kram. 
Intriguingly, as Ian mentioned, we actually performed inside an artwork. Ghanaian artist Ibrahim Mahama's installation covered all surfaces of the gallery except the ceiling, with the humble Hessian sack narrating a story about the exchange of goods and labor which are connected to both local and global histories. From that performance is this live recording of Ubi Caritas by Ole Yelo with glistening piano accompaniment played by Clinton Clarsen on a fazioli.
an excerpt from Vox Cape Town's live performance at the Norval Foundation in April last year. That was Ubi Caritas by Ole Yelo, accompanied by Clinton Klaassen. The Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols is broadcast annually on Christmas Eve by the BBC from King's College in Cambridge. Nine short readings are interspersed with the singing of Christmas hymns and carols. Each December, Vox Cape Town twice presents its own local adaptation of this famous service at St Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Somerset Road, continuing the tradition led for many years by the St George's singers and Barry Smith, and again at St Andrew's Church in Kildare Road in Newlands. Since 2016, we've also broadcast a recording of the service on FMR at 6pm on Christmas Eve, bringing this unique musical celebration to a much wider audience. Here are three of my favourite carols from last year's service, three very different styles of music. The first is a German carol from the 19th century, Mary Walks Amid the Thorns, and the second is the first recording of a new work by local composer Stephen Carletti. Finally, There Is No Rose by John Joubert, the South African-born composer who passed away last year.
Three Carols, sung by Vox Cape Town, in the order you heard them, Maria durch ein Dornwald ging, Bye Bye Lullaby, a new work by local composer Stephen Carletti, and There is No Rose by John Joubert. From the church back to the concert hall, two years ago Vox contributed to the 90th birthday celebration of another local composer, Thomas Reiner, by performing his large-scale choral work, The Creation, in the Baxter Concert Hall. The work is based on a beautiful, vivid retelling of the story of Genesis by James Weldon Johnson, incorporating the words and music of many spirituals. Gavin Julius made full use of the fine von Beckerath organ's orchestral colours as he accompanied our singing. Those were two extracts from The Creation by Tommy Reiner, Wade in the Water, and an adaptation of the popular tune Every Time I Feel Dispirit, from a live performance in the Baxter Concert Hall to celebrate the composer's 90th birthday, Gavin Julius accompanied Vox on the organ. Here's another familiar voice to FMR listeners, owner of Cape Town Sound Studio and mastermind of many of our recording projects. 
Hi, John and Carl. Patrick van Blerk here. It's wonderful to be back on Fine Music Radio. I listen to it all the time, and I miss doing the odd broadcast. However, here we are. Uh, lovely to be with you guys on celebrating your fifth birthday. I cannot, cannot believe it. And as I say, to be doing that with Fine Music Radio, which is, after all, where I first heard you. And when I heard you that Saturday, I called you and asked you to meet me for coffee, which you did. And the rest, as they say, is becoming history. It's a work in progress. I cannot believe it's so long ago. But we've done a number of albums, and I've attended almost all your concerts, which has been an incredible experience. What will forever stick in my mind is the incomparable night at St. George's when you did Sir Carl Jenkins' Stubborn Martyr along with all those other musicians and voices. It was a unique experience, and the recording, having been painstakingly put together by yourself and Kyle, especially Kyle, uh, who, who's a stickler in the studio with our engineer Sergio, but I, I regard it as a masterpiece, and I really look forward to the rest of the world being able to share that. Patrick mentioned the performance of The Stubborn Martyr by Sir Carl Jenkins. Two years ago, we staged our most ambitious musical project yet in collaboration with two other local choirs, Stadskoer Tijgerberg and the Robertson-based Cantique Chamber Choir. Welsh composer Carl Jenkins wrote his Stubbard Mater in 2008, but it had not yet, to our knowledge, been performed in Cape Town. Over the centuries, the Stubbard Mater has been set to music by Pergolesi, Haydn, Rossini, Dvorak, and Arvo Pärt, amongst others. The setting by Jenkins comprises an eclectic fusion of tone colours and musical scales from both Middle Eastern and Western traditions, giving fresh expression and intensity to this medieval text. The musicians were dressed in white, symbolising the innocence and purity of the Sorrowful Mother, and acted as a canvas for the atmospheric lighting that was designed to enhance the mood of each of the twelve movements. Linda Claassen conducted the work and Minette de Toy Pierce was the soloist. Here is the restless, driving finale of the work. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was the thrilling finale of The Stubborn Martyr by Sir Carl Jenkins, sung by the combined choirs of Vox Cape Town, Stadskoer Tegeberg, and the Cantique Chamber Choir, with an orchestra led by Lucia di Blasio Scott and Mario Nell at the organ, all conducted by Linda Claassen. Taking place in 2018, that was Vox's most ambitious project yet, with an audience of over 800 in St. George's Cathedral. Needless to say, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected our plans for this year. Although we had many exciting performances in the works, including a natural heritage, natural history-inspired concert in the whale well of the Ezekiel South African Museum, sadly this and many other events have had to be put on hold, while we respect public safety precautions and protect our singers and audiences. However, Vox is always looking for ways to do things differently, and so we've been exploring the world of virtual choir performances. We've already shared two lockdown projects with our supporters, and coinciding with our fifth birthday this week, we've just released our third virtual Vox project, and are excited to share it with you now. It's another piece by the Latvian composer Eric Eschenwaltz, who uses the shimmering, ethereal overtones of tuned glasses to evoke the magic and mystery of the heavens. Carolise Jacobs has produced a striking video comprising footage of our own local skies, so do take a look on YouTube. Before we say goodnight, we must acknowledge the invaluable contributions of our singers, our musical colleagues, our generous donors and our supporters, we're particularly grateful to the following individuals and organizations who've generously and significantly supported the group's activities. The Mapula Trust, Bill van Rensburg, Patrick van Blark and Cape Town Sound, Ian Berger Simpson and Stephen Bornman and St. George's Grammar School. Lastly, thank you to you for joining us here on FMR tonight. We've been very touched by your calls and messages during the evening and look forward to the time when we can sing for you again as we continue to create immersive, imaginative performances to enrich the musical life of Cape Town. Do visit us on social media or take a look at our website, voxcapetown.com, to stay informed about our future projects. And so from us in the studio, good night. And here, hot off the press, accompanied by the glistening sounds of tuned wine glasses, the sonorous, soaring vocal lines of stars by Eric Eschenwaltz, sung from home by Vox Cape Town. Thank mm-hmm. you.